everybody. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So I had a question on YouTube um, in the in the chat window recently about the water that I used in the new feature video um, showing Viewport 2.0. So this is just a quick overview of it one more time. It's really nothing um, too fancy. I will show a couple of other things after we talk about this water shader that you can do inside of Maya 2015 with regards to uh, water and large bodies of water, not using a fluid sim, but using shaders to drive those effects. So if we look at the shader uh, associated with this guy, it really is pretty straightforward. What we've got here is we've got a normal map that's just obviously tied into the um, bump node. This bump node is set to be a tangent space, pretty straightforward there. I've got that guy going on, and then I've also got just a simple um, reflection shader that's happening, so we're taking the reflected color and we're driving that with just a map that's essentially um, a version of the sky. And it's important to mention that if you get Service Pack 1 or Service Pack 2 installed in 2015, all of these parameters actually update correctly now. They didn't in previous versions of Maya, so things like the um, the elevation and the inclination of where that, that light map is all accurately capture themselves and also the placement node. So if you grab, you know, and start rotating that in Y, you can see that we're moving that reflection map across the surface. So that was newly supported in the um, service pack releases of 2015, all these sort of reflection shader attributes um, accurately getting picked up from the environment ball input. So the other thing that I have going on with this that um, I did in the new feature video was I just made a little facing ratio effect. So when you looked at the water from above, it was opaque. And when you look at it from... Um, from a glancing angle, it would be more transparent. So you'll notice that on this water, I've got sort of this little alpha file. And what I'm doing is I'm using the sampler info node to, and we, we don't have it turned on yet. I'm going to turn it on in just a second. But the idea is I'm going to use a sampler info node to query which way the normals are facing. That sends out a zero to one range. So I'm going to take that range and modify it using the ramp widget. And I use ramps all the time. So by default, Maya's ramps are set to be V ramps. So all you have to do is grab that attribute that you want to use the ramp to modify and shove it into the V chord. So with that done, it's going to give me the ability to take what used to be, um, you know, black to white or zero to one and re repipe that into whatever range of values I want. So I've got that just shoved into the alpha gain. So you can see that it's red, meaning that it's not going to evaluate or it's going to ignore it. So if you just right click on that and say don't ignore, as soon as we do that, now you can see that we have that facing ratio effect. So when I look from above, it's fully transparent. And when I look from these glancing angles, it goes to being fully opaque, except on the areas where that little alpha channel has been, you know, sort of painted into the map there. So obviously with that all done, I could use my ramp widget to adjust where that transition is going to happen or how that range of values is going to get remapped for for the overall effect of what that that sort of sampling of the normals is doing as far as its value range is concerned it's it's being remapped with that map or that ramp so that's really pretty much it um, as far as the way I did the water in my demo files for the 2015 release it's really pretty straightforward but hopefully um, with that slightly deeper explanation, it makes sense to you guys. So let's blow this away, and I'll just talk about a couple other things that you can do um, that are kind of cool and newly supported in 2015. And one of those things is the, the ocean shader, right? So if you go ahead and create a piece of geometry, and I'm just going to give this guy a few more polys here. Let's just put that up to like 30 or even 40. So with that done, we'll go ahead and we're going to assign a new material to this. So we're just going to go to the standard Maya materials. And this is pretty cool that the ocean shader now shows up correctly inside of uh, Viewport 2.0. So we've got this ocean shader in here. Let's go ahead and just create um, a little bit of lighting here. We'll put a directional light in our scene and sort of rotate that dude around. And we'll put an ambient light in there too. So we'll just sort of get something going like that, kind of even put a little bit of blue in that guy. So we've got this water shader um, showing up in our scene here. Let's go ahead and turn our hardware lighting on. And we'll grab this guy and just make sure that we get some shadows turned on there too. And I'll turn on all the other stuff also. We can get rid of that heads up display. You don't need to see any of that nonsense. So what we've got here is we've got the ocean shader. Obviously, if I start to um, graph that that guy here, if we scrub through our time slider, 
that Ocean Shader obviously updates and displays inside of Viewport 2.0 now, which is, is which is really pretty cool. And you can also with the Ocean Shader turn on the foam model, and this is this is really awesome, right? So if you start to emit some foam, we'll actually start to get some nice white caps sort of showing up at the tops of those waves. And the last thing that we're going to do with this guy, or the next thing that we're going to do with this guy, is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put on this a um, modifier, and we're going to convert that to, uh, we're going to convert underneath modify displacement to polygons with history. So as soon as we do that, we've now got some actual displacement in that water. And obviously, if I scrub through this, we're still getting a really nice update on that guy. And the other thing that's kind of cool about the ocean shader is, uh, it's just kind of a, a, a weird thing. In the fluids, there's these ocean commands. The ocean commands aren't actually using anything to do with fluids, either the traditional fluids or Bifrost. It's just using this ocean shader with some expressions and things like that to give you the ability to actually float objects on the water. So if you've got an ocean shader in your scene, you can take an object, and in this example, we're just going to create like a polygon object that's going to represent sort of a boat. Let's just crank the uh, quality of that up a little bit there. We can take that guy and we can make that float. Now, you have to have an ocean shader in there before you run the make boats command. So if you just say fluid effects ocean with the object highlighted, um, make boats, as soon as you do that, it's going to now put a whole bunch of expressions on that. So it's on the locator node that basically allow you to, um, you know, to play this back. And you can see that we get this little kind of bouncing boat happening. And obviously, the, you can play around with all these different attributes. But it really does a pretty good job of simulating that guy, you know, floating on the water and getting controlled by that water. Now, obviously, we can go into this ocean shader and start to play around with, you know, maybe give it a little more wave peaking in areas. If you turn the turbulence down, you'll start to get rolling waves instead of these kind of uh, undulating or that those waves that had all that extra turbulence in them, give them a little more wave height in certain areas. So it's a really, uh, it's a pretty awesome shader, and the ability to accurately see it and the foam model all inside of Viewport 2.0, you know, I think is actually pretty, uh, pretty cool. And that's also new in 2015. You couldn't, you couldn't do this in a previous version. So if you're on an older version, um, the ocean shader you'd have to render out to actually see the effects and things like that. But that gives you a pretty good introduction to, um, to the ocean shader, the make boats command, awesome, fun tool to play around with. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this, uh, this is helpful to y'all. Cheers.